Welcome and thanks for attending. I'm Scott at Chief Architect and we're here today to discuss our 3D solid tools and how they are evolving for the next version in our software. You may notice my occasional assistant Maya here. Also on today's webinar are a number of Chief Architect staff members to keep an eye on me and also to help with your questions you may have. I'm first going to go through my presentation, should be about 30 minutes. During this time, you can chat your questions into the staff. Then following the presentation, we'll open it up for the live questions. You can simply raise your hand, unmute your microphone. You'll find these settings in your GoToWebinar control panel for unmuting your microphone and also raising your hand. Our session today will be recorded. We'll be sending out a link following the presentation in the next day or so. We're also going to include a survey and we would greatly appreciate any feedback you may have. With that, let me switch over here and let's get started with our presentation. Let's begin by looking at what is a 3D solid. 3D solids are objects that typically begin from primitive geometric shapes like a box, sphere, or pyramid. You can use freeform CAD drawing tools and convert them into 3D solids. 3D solids can be edited and you can combine them using Boolean operations including subtract, intersection, and union. Why use a 3D solid in Chief Architect? Typically you might use them to create custom objects the program won't allow you to create automatically. Items like you see here, an integrated sink, wine cabinet, custom countertop, shaped gable posts, and more. Let's begin by looking at Chief Architect's primitive 3D solid tools. Probably the most commonly used tool is our polyline solid. You typically might use it to create a simple 3D solid shape. You can do this either in a plan view or in an elevation view. Let me begin by placing a polyline solid in the floor plan view. I'm going to click and drag and create a rectangle. In this view, you can click on this object and you're going to notice edit handles. Anywhere there's a diamond, you can easily move and reshape this. You can click on any edge, which is currently the selected edge is highlighted in red, and you're going to find some CAD tools that you can modify this. One is to shape this by creating a line to arc. You can click on it. Again, you can click on this little red diamond and you can pull it in, pull it out, and if you hold your control key down or your command key, you get even broader flexibility in the way that edits. You can add new breaks into the polyline solid. With the selected edge, you can use a break tool found in my lower edit menu, place a break, and then you can add a new break, you see a new segment, you can then create and shape your polyline solid. The other primitive 3D solid tools we have are the box. Again, you click and drag a sphere, click and drag a cylinder, click and drag a cone. These will look the same in a 2D view, a pyramid, and finally a face which requires at least three different sides to create a custom face. Let's go in and take a 3D view and see what we have. I'm going to use a perspective full overview camera. In this view you can see the various solids. You can continue to do editing on these by simply clicking on the diamond and pulling it down and making the adjustment. Now for the polyline solid, let me double click and let's look inside of the dialog. You can change the thickness for these and since I created this in the floor plan view, a increased thickness will increase it in an elevation view from the floor, in this case the finished floor, or you can do it from an absolute and a few other options in here. Then you can set the elevation at the bottom, in this case I'll set it to be zero which would be considered at the subfloor level, make the changes, and then you're going to notice a number of other settings for the polyline. It'll give you the area calculation. Selected arc. You can see the different radius. Currently you'll notice that the arc is currently selected, indicated by the red color by my mouse. You could come in here 
you could adjust the radius. Notice that you can lock different elements. If I were to lock the chord, I could come in here and type in a radius and be very specific about creating a 3D solid. Line style, fill style, and a few other items. Let's go ahead and close the dialog, set this to be a thicker object, and now you can see the result. The 3D primitives allow you to create more complex shapes than our basic polyline solid. The dialog box will look somewhat different than the polyline solid for this reason. And new beginning in Chief Architect X13 is a specific elevation reference you can use like the polyline solid to set your elevation reference again absolute from floor other options and define the elevation at the top and bottom for more flexibility as you create your solids. As I make some height adjustments in here to make the editing a little bit easier let's go in and look at a few more editing tools. While the solid is still selected you're going to find one of the edit tools in the edit menu at the bottom of my screen is the whole tool. You can click and drag on the surface, come down, you get the visual effect, click and that will place a hole inside of that solid as we kind of rotate the camera up. That hole is rectangular in shape. You can create any style of hole. If we go back into the 2D view, I'm going to use the CAD circle tool. Let's zoom in. I'm going to draw a small circle. When I click on this circle, I'm going to come down into my lower edit menu. I'm going to use the convert polyline. You're going to see one of the options is to create a hole. This allows you to generate a hole in any custom shape that you want. Back into 3D view, let's switch over our camera rendering technique to the glasshouse view. You can now see that cylinder hole that we put into that solid. The next set of editing tools you'll find are our Boolean tools you can use for union, intersection, and subtraction. Let's take a look at how these tools work using our primitives and then we'll put them to use using real world examples of creating objects. I'm going to take this cylinder and I'm going to slide it into the box. I'll first use the subtraction tool. Let's go ahead and click on the subtraction, click on the box. And you're going to notice that we've created a pie shape out of the result of that subtraction operation. Next, let's take a look at the intersection operation. Let's click on the pyramid. Let's pull it over so that it intersects with the pie. Using the intersection tool in my lower edit menu, we'll go ahead and click on the tool, click on the pie shape, and the resulting operation is an intersection of those two solids. The final Boolean tool is the union. Let me grab this cylinder. Let's go ahead and pull that over so that it's underneath the sphere. And I'll use the union tool again in my lower edit menu. Click on the union. Click on the sphere. Resulting in a union of those two objects. The next solid editing tool we can look at is the extrude. If I select the resulting apple slice from the intersection tool, let's use the extrude tool again in my lower edit menu. It's called Extrude Object. Click on that. It's going to ask you the extrusion amount. I'll just accept the default values that came up in this dialog box. And you can see the result of the extrusion of that object. Now the final one, if we select on the face that we've generated, is the tool for Revolve Object. Again, it's going to give you some information about how to revolve it. Our help system is context sensitive and will help you understand all the information you see here in the dialog box. Let's go in and accept the defaults. Again, the key one that I want to do is the angle of rotation. And you can see the result of using that revolve operation. Let's put these solids into practical use. I have an example of a plan up here with several different solids, beginning with a kitchen island on the right, a wine cabinet, an integrated sink, custom fountain for a swimming pool, and then the gable tool. Let's begin by looking at the polyline solid tool to create the island. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that have changed between version X12 and version X13. Let's switch over into a new empty plan. 
I'm going to begin the process just by using a polyline solid and I'm going to click and drag to create the first segment of this island. Now this polyline solid, let's go ahead and make it six inches in thickness so we'll easily be able to see it. Let's set the floor to top at 42 inches. Now one of the new things that we've done in Chief Architect X13 and is different from X12 and prior, when you create your polyline solids in a plan view and an elevation view, they do behave differently. And working here in X13, if I take an elevation view of this solid we just created, and I create one more solid, this time in the elevation view, let's just go ahead and use our polyline solid. Let's create a solid off to the side here. We'll set the thickness maybe at uh, 12 inches so we can see this. Now when you go to select the main solid we created in the plan view, you're going to notice that we have our Boolean tools for the subtraction, intersection, and union tools that are now available to you. We've made this easier. Previously, you actually had to create these two polyline solids to a 3D primitive using the tool that we still provide to you for creating this as a solid. And we've just eliminated that step. Again, that's beginning in X13. So regardless if you've created your solid in a elevation view or in a plan view, you can easily still manipulate these using the tools for the Boolean tools for the manipulations. Let's go back into our plan view here. And what I want to do is I want to create for this kitchen island a circle and let's begin the process. I'm just going to use the circle tool. I'm going to come over here, create a snap onto the end of it. Looks like a typical basketball free throw area. Using this circle tool, I'm going to grab the circle. I'm going to come down. I'm going to use this option to convert it to a polyline. I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a polyline solid. Notice that I do have an option here to convert it to a countertop. That would work fine. Countertops work as also 3D solids. They're very similar to a polyline solid. For this particular example, I'm going to just use the polyline solid. Let's go ahead and create that as a solid. The program will ask you for the thickness. Let's go ahead and set that to be six inches. And I believe we said from the finished floor previously and then the floor to top again. I'm going to set it at the exact same dimensions that we did for the other object. Before I close this dialog, I actually want to make this circle larger than the kitchen island finger. I'm going to come over to the selected arc. I'm going to make sure that the lock center is indicated and I'm going to change the radius in here to 28 to increase the size of that circle and then let's go ahead and take a look at this in our 3D overview. In the 3D view, you see the two objects that we've created. Let's just review the Boolean operations that we have. If I select the main finger for the island and we come over and we take a look at using the first one here, the subtraction, and I click on the circle, it will remove the circle out of the object. Let me press undo here. Then select the finger again and we use the tool for intersection. Click on the circle. You see the result of the intersection of the two. Undo one more time. And then the final operation, the one that I actually want to perform for this kitchen island, is the union operation. And I'm going to click on the circle. That allows us to generate the shape for the kitchen island. Now as you take a look at the completed kitchen island, you're going to notice that the inside of the kitchen island is a different material from the outer. So let me show you the process that I went through to create this particular countertop for the island. Step number one is to create a copy of the polyline solid that we currently have. Click on the polyline solid, come down into my lower edit menu. I'm going to select the copy and paste and then right next to that tool is the copy and paste hold position. This will generate a copy of this polyline solid in the exact same coordinates. Now I want to resize this so I can actually change the materials. 
before I resize it, I'm going to show you how I do this in a specific manner. Underneath my preferences, I'm going to come down and I'm going to come into the edit behaviors. And what I like to do is change the edit type for concentric. And all I'm going to do is come in here and put in 12 inches. When I use this edit in a concentric manner, it will jump 12 inches. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to select the polyline solid. I'm going to move my cursor over the corner. While it's over the corner, I'm going to press the letter C on my keyboard and I'm going to slide it in. You can see that it took that copy, concentrically resized it in from the corner at 12 inches, and now I have the two pieces that I want. So I want to use this as a subtraction operation. I'm going to select the larger polyline solid. I'm going to come down. I'm going to use the subtraction tool. I'm going to come up and I'm going to click the subtraction using that smaller copy we generated. And now you can see that we have the shape for the internal of the countertop. And what I need to do, since these are two different materials, is I actually need to create a copy of this hole cut out, make it a solid, and then I can apply the material differently. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's click on the edge. Notice that it is highlighted. And again, I'm going to do the very same operation we just did, copy and paste in place. So come down into my lower edit menu, copy, paste in place. Let's go ahead and open this up by double clicking on it. And underneath the general panel, you can see that it's using the same coordinates. Maybe difficult to see since they're both the same material right now. Let's open up the library. I'm going to type in crackle glass. I'll grab that material. We'll go ahead and apply it. Let's toggle on our standard render view so we can take a look at this. And now you can see that we actually have been able to generate that style of a countertop using our solid tools. As we move on from creating the custom countertop, let's look at the steps to create this custom wine cabinet. I'm going to go back into an empty plan and let's begin the process by placing a cabinet here and then I'm going to take an elevation view to create this style of a wine cabinet. Now the first thing I'm going to do is click on the cabinet and I'm going to remove the set of double doors on here. I'm going to click on the face item and I'm going to just change that face item from the auto right door to an opening. Then I'm going to use the polyline solid tool. I'm going to press equals on my keyboard to turn on my crosshairs. And then I'm going to just come in here approximately and draw the polyline solid right in front of the cabinet. Now purposely, you can still see the shelves through the cabinet. And when you go back into the plan view, you'll actually see that it's created in the back of the cabinet. This is actually going to be helpful when we're finished here, we'll move it. But I like to see the shelves because when I create the holes for the wine bottles, I'll be able to see exactly where to create these. I'm going to use a circle tool. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to draw a circle. I'm using the Premier version, which allows me to press tab and enter in a value as I'm creating the circle. This is a feature available in Premier in the Interiors product. You can simply use the temporary dimension that you get when you tap on these, and then you can set your temporary dimension. I'll position the circle. While it's selected, I'm going to come down to the lower edit menu. I'm going to choose the tool to convert it to a polyline. You can see the default is marked as a polyline solid. I'm actually going to choose that compared to the solid hole because when I want to do a multiple copy on it, I just want to copy the polyline solid, which will actually be converted into a hole as we'll see in the next step. So I'm going to mark that it's a polyline solid. Once I've done that, when you have a polyline solid over another one, you can actually mark that it's a hole inside of it. You see the preview panel pop up. And because I selected it as an individual pylon solid, you can see it's selected. I'll use the multiple copy. I'll set the interval of this, which will be five and three quarters by six inches. And I'm just going to come in. I'm going to hold my right mouse button down, drag to the right, pull my mouse down. When I'm at the bottom, I'll left click 
and now you can see we've created all of the holes. The last step would be to go back into the plan view, draw a marquee around that polyline solid, and just pull it to the front of the cabinet so it's positioned exactly where you need it. As long as we're in this elevation view, what I'd like to do is go back over into the 3D example camera view and take a look at the process for creating a shaped gable post as you can see in this particular example. In the elevation view, I'm just going to slide over off to the side here. I'm going to use a line tool and I'm going to click and drag to create a line. I'll select the line and in my lower edit menu, you're going to find a tool that is used to create the line to an arc. Once this becomes an arc, you can use the reshape handle to adjust the arc. You can also double click to open up the arc and specifically set information about the arc. Notice that you can lock certain elements. In this case, I'll lock the cord, change the radius to a different number, and then to create an exact copy of this symmetrically, I'm going to come down to my lower edit menu. I'm going to use the copy and then paste in position. Then using the resize, I can actually pull that down. You'll see the radius actually adjust accordingly. Then I'll just position it approximately where I want it. Then using the line tool, I'm just going to come in here. I'll draw a line perpendicular. You can select this line and then use the join intersecting points. That should then connect those two lines. And then we'll just use the line tool, come down here and connect those. At that point, you should have formed a closed polyline. Then in my lower edit menu, I can use the tool again to convert this to a polyline, choose that it's a polyline solid. And then I'll go ahead and set the thickness of that to be eight inches to create the solid that can be used for the solid for our gable post. For the next object, let's create an integrated sink. I have a couple of photos over here that are examples, also the rendering of what we'll actually create. Let's go back into our working empty plan, and I'm just going to create a polyline solid. Then using the elevation view, let's take an elevation view of the side of this polyline solid. First step is to set the thickness of it. Let's double click, open it up, and I'm just going to set the thickness of it to be 6 inches and then the floor to top at 32 inches. To create the integrated sink, I'm going to use the CAD tools and specifically I'm just going to use the line tool. I'm going to come in here and draw the profile that I want for the sink. And again, we'll just kind of approximate the way this should be. Come over here and then we'll connect the two surfaces using this approach. And once we've got it connected, I can now convert this to a solid. Come down into the lower edit menu, choosing the convert to polyline. Again, I want to convert it to a polyline solid. And then when we do that, this will be the width of the sink. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in 16 inches. And then we'll need to go back into the floor plan view and make sure that this is positioned exactly where we want it. Let's take this product that we just created. You might want to use the center tool and center it exactly on the other object. And if we come over and let's just take a 3D view here. So now what I want to do is I want to click the larger surface, the base, and then use the subtract tool and then click on the object I want to do the subtraction from. And you can see that we've created the cutout in that sink. What's different beginning with Chief Architect X13 is previously you would have had to have created both of those objects to a primitive solid to do the operation. If I press the undo button here, that process would have required you to first select each of the objects, use the convert to solid tool. You'll find here in the lower edit menu. Again, we'll do the same thing on this polyline solid, selecting this tool, converting it to a solid. Now that they're both primitive solids, you could select the object, use the subtraction tool, and then click on the shaped object to create the integrated sink. So beginning in Chief Architect X13, we've made the steps a lot easier and kind of hidden some of the complexity just to make it more user-friendly for you. Now the last object that I want to go through the steps in creating 
is this pool fountain that is also serving as a jump platform to go into the swimming pool. Let's go back into our working plan and go through the steps. This will be easiest to do in an elevation view. Let's use our camera and just simply take an elevation view. Using the Polyline Solid tool, let's click and drag, press the Tab key. Again, I'm using Chief Architect Premier. When you're drawing something and you press the Tab key, you can enter in your coordinates. If you're using Chief Architect Interiors, this is an added feature, only available in Premier. You can always use your temporary dimensions to set this. For the dimensions here, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set the dimensions to 96 inches, which will be for the width and then I'm going to set it to be 72 inches, which will be for the height. Then, for the thickness, let's double click, let's open it up, and I'm going to set the thickness of this to be 30 inches. At this point, you're going to notice that it's difficult to see the object in the elevation view. When I set the thickness of it to be 30 inches, it moved it forward toward the camera. I will need to go back in, make the adjustment with the camera, simply just click on it, and pull it back. As I return back into the elevation view for the fountain water, I'm going to use the Polyline Solid tool. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to snap on the bottom, and I'm just going to click up towards the top. I'm going to use this solid to cut out for the water. I'm going to click on the edge. I'm going to set the dimension of it to be exactly 12 inches. And then I'm going to set the thickness of it by double clicking on it and come in here and set it to be 4 inches. At this point, back into the plan view and I'm going to position it exactly where I want for the cutout. Let's go ahead and slide it back. Notice that I've left it just in front of the larger solid. While it's selected, I'm going to go ahead and set the dimension of it at 12 inches. I'm going to use the fourplex handle to actually move the entire object as opposed to just one side. Press enter. That will exactly position it. Now I'm going to do an edit in this plan view on a solid that I created in the elevation view. I'm going to click on this corner and I'm just going to pull it in one click. So you can create a trapezoid shape. When I did that operation, it converted it from a polyline solid to a shape. If I double click on it, open it up, you can see that we are actually editing a shape now. Let's go into the elevation view. I'm going to create two additional copies of this select the object, use the multiple copy tool. I'm going to set the interval of it to be at 30 inches. I'll move my cursor over the object. You'll notice that it changes and we'll slide a couple of copies down. I now have the three objects to create the water and what I need to do is cut it out. Before I cut it out, I'm going to save myself a step and I'm going to create a copy of both the main pedestal and also of one of the water fountains. So I'm just going to hold the shift key down, grab both objects, press control C on the keyboard. You'll see how this step comes into play because I'm going to use the paste hold position in just a minute and show you how to save a step. So I'm going to make a copy of that. Now I'm going to select the main object. I'm going to use the subtract operation. Click on the first one. The main pedestal is still selected click on the subtract, click on the middle one. Again, the pedestal is still selected. Click on subtract and now you can see it. Let's go back in and just take a 3D view and see what we're looking at so far. You can see in a 3D view the main shape we've cut out for the water. Now I'm going to use the operation paste hold position. Come up to my menu, come down to paste, hold position paste those objects in there. I'm going to take the main object that we just created. I'm going to slide this up because this is going to be the foundation for the top platform. Let's go ahead and go back in and resize this by just kind of tipping down. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's use a concentric resize. That's going to be easiest to be done through our preferences. And I'm just going to use the concentric resize to four inches click on the object, come over to the corner, hold the letter C down for concentric. I'm just going to pull that out four inches wider. We'll just pull this back down. This is going to work as our platform. Select the top of it. We'll just pull that down so that we approximately have the platform. Let's go in to our library. 
I'm going to search for water. Number five, we'll grab this, apply it in this view, and then let's use our multiple copy. We should still have the same interval loaded up there. Slide that down. And that's a quick way to use the copy paste hold position to generate the water. And let's browse down to one of our manufacturers down here. Let's come down, let me find Enviro Glass. They usually have some fun colors in here. So as we come down and expand their catalog, let's see what we have for one of the categories. We'll find one of these fun colors. Let's go ahead and apply it to the lower object. Find more of a neutral one, apply it to the top object. Let's switch our camera view back over to the standard. And here is the jump platform slash water fountain we were able to create out of the solid tools. There are a lot of custom objects you can create using Chief Architect's 3D solid modeling tools. And remember, any of these objects can be added to your user library to share with others or to use on a future project. A lot of new things you can create using the 3D Solid tool, and we'd like to see if you have any questions out there that you'd like to ask as we go through that process. In your GoToWebinar control panel, you'll find a raise hand option. When you do that, make sure you just unmute your mic. And with that, I'll kind of turn it over to Carrie and see if there's any questions out there that, uh, that you'd like to ask. Thanks, Scott. Uh, we had Cody right in. They don't have a mic, but they'd like to know, could you use these tools to make a custom shaped door or window? And if so, could you demonstrate that? Yeah, sure. Um, great question. So these solid tools that uh, we've been using, if you wanted to create, maybe we'll just kind of pick on the door example. If you want to create a door, let's see, while that uh, question came up, let me grab one of my examples up here and we'll just kind of go through the steps. Let me grab one of our sample plans that we have open here. And um, let's take a view here and see what we've got. So I've got just a simple rectangular shape and I've done it before the subtraction and after the subtraction. And maybe if we take a 3D view of this, let me just grab my camera here and take a 3D overview of it. So on the right-hand side of the screen here, the gray door, what I've done here is I've created a solid and then I've created two separate shapes as well, the top and the bottom, and then I did the subtraction. So the steps really in doing this, if we just kind of slide over here, is I'm just gonna come over, I'm gonna use the polyline solid tool, come down and click and drag. Again, one of the tips I like to do is to just use the tab key as I'm pressing that in there. So I'm just gonna make it 36 by 96. So I know it's exactly approximately the shape of the door. And then you can either use the CAD tool and draw the shape you wanted to, to create a custom door. Or if we just kind of, let's just use maybe a, another polyline solid in here and we'll just kind of create a different shape. Pull that down just a little bit and then we'll just curve this top portion of this so that it's a little bit more interesting. And then um, we'll just call that uh, pretty close to what we wanted to do. Let me make that pretty smooth at the top. Okay, so let's assume that this looks good. And one of the things that I'm gonna do is let's just make sure when I do these two operations of the subtract, that the thickness is set because I want the door to be approximately two inches or an inch and three quarters. And then we'll predefine exactly how far to cut this uh, inset that we created. So let's take the inset first and we'll just make that one inch, that's fine. And then let's take the main door here and let's set that to be one and three quarters inches. Then I'm gonna go back into the plan view, make sure that I have the overlap approximately where I wanna do the cutout in here. So you can see this where we have the overlap, it's gonna take a chunk out of that door, and then I'm gonna um, do the subtraction operation. And it's possible if you wanted to maybe do something where you wanted to um, take this, 
And the first step is since these are both polyline solids, we may need to actually convert this to a solid tool. So I'm gonna use this convert to solid. And then once I have that, I should be able to click on the main door, do the subtraction operation. Let's see that in my lower edit menu. Click on the subtraction. Let's go back in to the 3D view, slide over. And there we've created the door. Now the next step, I'm just gonna borrow the color off of the other door, paint it on here. The next step to make this actually a door and put it in your library is to convert this into a symbol. And let's just uh, temporarily, let me just delete a couple of these things so we can show you how that works. So I'm just gonna delete these other two objects that I created. And then when you're in a 3D view, you can convert this to a symbol underneath your tools menu, symbol, and you're gonna to wanna to convert it to a symbol. This will pop up the dialogue and say, okay, let's go ahead and create this as a symbol. I'll call it my door number two. And then we'll choose the category. And you wanna make sure that you make the category selection here because we'll actually convert this so that it can be a parametric door when you resize it. There's an advanced options that you can come in here and do some settings. That should all be okay. It shows up in the library. And then let's just go back into our plan view. Let's draw a wall. Let's put in the door. And let's see what it looks like. Delete that because I don't need it. And then the great thing about it is when you resize it, as I mentioned, it's parametric and it will allow you to create that. So you could create a cabinet door or in this case, a uh, entry door, interior door, save it in your library, and then you have access to it. Hopefully that answers your question, Cody. Thanks, Scott. We have a question from Mark. Hi, Mark, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, I'm just wondering if it's uh, easier to use a solid, a 3D solid for say uh, a terrain model or something. I, I find the uh, terrain tools a little challenging. Uh, mm -hmm. Just for a quick show the uh, show the grades and things like that. Sure. Um, sections and things like that. But uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I find it uh, sometimes, I find myself chasing it if I'm trying to reshape <laughs> And it's not always cooperating. So I'm just wondering yeah. if that's the best tool. You know, Mark, I know a lot of people do use the solids for terrain. And if you're comfortable in, in using a solid for the terrain and it works for you, there's, there's no problem at all with using it. The uh, tools, you kind of see this little uh, ramp in the middle that you could, you know, simulate the terrain. And um, sure, that'd work fine. It, the okay. terrain tools are pretty powerful and um yeah i guess i just need a little more time on it and, and sure. trying to figure out yeah you know, i put some numbers in and expect it to do one thing and it comes out like uh, crazy yeah i'll just mention to the uh you know we'll chat out we did a seminar on terrain we've got a couple of terrain seminars the one advantage to using the actual terrain tool as opposed to the solid modeling tool is if you have surveyor data uh, it's easy to import that and then you could actually generate the slope for your terrain and it will also cut out automatically for the footprint of the house. So there are some advantages in using it, but a lot of times people just use tools they're comfortable with. And if if that gets the job done, then I would use that tool that you're comfortable with. OK, I appreciate that. Thank you. you bet. Thanks, hey, thanks a lot, Mark. Yep. Scott, we have a question from Larry. Hi, Larry. Go ahead and ask your question. Well, thanks, you guys. Hey, Scott, great job as usual. Really appreciate your expertise. Hey, Larry. Uh, quick question, I, and I hope this isn't uh, beyond the scope of this um, webinar, but you gave an example earlier where you drew two arcs to create that, uh, I think it was a truss you were working on, but I run up against that all the time, how to size that second radius sure. uh, with a cul-de-sac, all kinds of different places. Is there a technique that fits within this webinar that you could share? 
Yeah, let's um, let's take a look, and I may actually have Al jump on here. Um, let me just uh, drop into an elevation view here, and let's slide over off to the side. So the example that I used is I just drew a line. I took that line and I converted it to an arc. And sometimes we go in here and we lock the cord of it and we set the radius of that arc to, we'll just use 180 since that'll be close. And then what I did in the uh, in that session here was I used the copy tool, right? And I slid it down. If you press the tab key, you could be, you know, pretty exact about that. I sure. pressed the tab key. And in this case, if we are to shorten that by some predefined amount, let's just assume that it, maybe that's the predefined amount. And then we want to come back in here and pull that in, adjust it that radius on this lower one is going to be different if we go back in and actually look at the selected arc possibly it actually, should be different you mean should be different but actually it's not different right yes i think that's the challenge yeah and and so um depending on the situation al what are you are you out there are you able to maybe weigh in on how to yeah uh, draw your first yes. arc okay draw draw the draw an arc first okay All right. All right. Now, you, there's going to be a handle, a round handle in the middle, not that one. Yeah. Now, if you pull that, it'll maintain see it, but that goes away when you copy. You don't have okay. that option if you hit the copy tool. So copy the first one in place. Yep. Copy, hold place. Now move it. Pull it down. Yep. Oh, I can see it changing radius. Correct, Al? Yeah. Yeah. So if you keep pulling that down, it'll basically find the center of that arc that uh, the circle that arc is describing, defining. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I saw your question come in, Larry, and I was waiting yeah. for you to Sorry, phone Scott. in. And, yeah. Again, a big thank, thank a big thank you to you guys. You do such a good job. I really appreciate it. And thanks for taking the time to explain that. And I'll, well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Larry. All right, see you. Scott, we have Robin here with a question. Hi, Robin, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, um, a huge thank you from me as well. I look forward to these every week um, and, and, and very much enjoy them. And um, so I was trying to create a uh, stove hearth for a kitchen. Um, I have an air handler, so I have a pad out in a wall that's about 24 inches. So I've tried this two ways. I've tried doing it as a wall niche and I've tried doing it as a 3D solid where I did a subtraction. But in both cases, I cannot pull a cabinet into the cavity. The cavity is about five foot wide by 96 high with an arc opening. Okay, Robin. So let's see if we can kind of create your scenario here. Let me delete a couple of things and let's just pull this stuff out. So if we were to say we had a niche in this wall and let's just use our niche tool here and we'll place a niche and you said it's pretty big. We'll just make uh, something that's somewhat big and we pull it out and you said the top of it had an arc on it, right? That's correct. So and, we'll and, just, uh-huh. And the bottom would be at zero, and, okay. the top, and the top would be at 84, 96, whatever the top would be at, correct. Okay. So let me just kind of uh, approximate something uh, so that I can do it quickly here. And uh, so we can set the depth of this niche. Usually it's gonna be based on whatever your wall thickness is. We'll just use the three or four inches for the depth of it. And so now you're trying to put a cabinet or something like that in here? That's correct. So my, my okay. niche is actually, a, it's 19 and a half inches. And I want the cabinet to be flush with, flush and centered with the back of that niche. Okay, so you have a very thick wall or something? That's inches. correct. I have an air handler system coming up along the side of it. So hmm. I have a okay. wall. 
<laughs> and uh, so we'll just set this niche to be, you said 17 or so? 19, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. okay. So we'll set it so it's pretty deep, right? And then let's see about putting a cabinet over here. And we'll turn that on. And apparently, let's just make sure that my display is set up correctly. Okay. So here's our cabinet as we slide it over and we probably go into the plan view. I'm guessing that's going to be flush with the wall, right? It's going to be flush with the wall, but not the niche. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. That's what I'm looking at. But I've tried this with both the niche and doing it, doing the wall as a 3D solid with a subtraction. So I've tried both mm -hmm. ways. So here's what you could do if you want to move this cabinet into the niche. Currently, we have a setting on for bumping and snapping, and you could go into your preferences and turn that off. You can also temporarily override it um, on a PC, it's holding the control key down. And on the Mac, it's holding the command key. So then you can just slide that in, right? And then we can just kind of position it exactly where we want. Let's use our overhead camera, take a peek. And is that what you're trying to do? Yes, but but it won't flush out with the back. So when you hit the control key, you can't center it in that opening, and nor can you, um, and nor can you get it precise measurements to the back of that opening. Okay. So I use the center tool to center it. Which I'm sorry, like click. Okay. So you do that yeah, let me let me undo it. Let me undo it. Okay. So what I did is I clicked on the cabinet. Using the center tool, yep. I get a visual indicator that should center it. So I've done that in plan view, and it I haven't gotten like the center tool won't even come up. Well, let's take a look. Let's go back into our floor plan view and let's grab the cabinet. Let's see if it works in the plan view. It should work. Yeah. Oh, I see your center tool and my, like I have mine open right now and my center tool is not coming up. <laughs> it's just, it's um, not. Okay. So let me just check. That's possible. That's something that's new in next 13. So if we just do, let me just pull this over real quick. Um, unless somebody, one of our staff members know if that's a new feature. So if we just draw a wall, we put a niche in here using our niche tool. And let's place a cabinet. And then let's see if we can grab the cabinet, use the center tool. Yeah, I think it's working okay, Robin. Are you not yeah, seeing? I'm looking, and I'm not, no, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the center tool. It's not coming up, which is why I was struggling. Um. Okay, I don't know if there's any staff members on here that might know what's going on with her situation. Anybody out there know about this? Scott, I don't know, but she may be able to solve her problem just as easily by using the point-to-point -point move tool using a CAD point, and that would give you an accurate location also. Okay, there's a couple ways that you could do that. Um, I believe that was Adrian on the phone here. So when I grab this cabinet, um, let's just kind of pull it out here. There is a point to point move tool. I draw a line. So sometimes there's just not a good way to center things. So if I use this line tool and hopefully you have a center with a line tool or you could snap it onto the center of it. So now I have a line, you could center the cabinet using the line. And then as Adrian mentioned, there's a point to point move. So if I took this point to point move while the cabinet is selected, down in my lower edit menu, this point to point move, I could take that and then snap on the back and move it into a precise position. And, and maybe it's because I'm actually, I did a 3D cat, I did the uh, polyline solid. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why so I was created, Okay, so you created your wall as a solid. I created my wall and then I put a polyline solid in front of it. I see. So, okay. and then I did the subtraction and the cabinet, I couldn't, I couldn't even pull the cabinet back into uh -huh. the subtraction. It, it just, see. it said, nope, nope, we're not gonna let you do that. Right. Well, um, hopefully 
if you hold your control key down, it will allow you to be very flexible and exactly where you want to position that. Okay. And, um, you know, if you're using a polyline solid to create something like that, that's perfectly fine if that works for you. And then if you need to do precise movements, you're not seeing the tool because maybe it's not a, available. Remember the point to point move or even a CAD line can maybe help in positioning it in, in an accurate way. Good enough. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for calling in. Scott, we have Beth Forward. Hi, Beth. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Um, I, I'm pretty new at this, and you've given a lot of terminology. I was wondering if you could review what is a symbol, a polyline solid, a polyline, a primitive tool, and you use the word Boolean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, gosh, Beth, thanks for the question. And and you're right. There's a lot of lot of terminology we just threw out there, right? Um, so it, if you let's see if I can maybe just open up a slide over here. So really, kind of what is a solid, a 3D solid? Um, it it's for the most part anything that's not really kind of automatic in the program. And the tools that I have up on my screen here are kind of called primitive tools. Um, there may be a better one here at the very top, easier to see. The, these tools at the top, the pyramid and a, and a sphere and a, and a box, those are primitives. And really the time you use those is to create interesting things that are custom. Um, and, and so those are available to you. And those are called 3D primitives. There's a simple variation of this called a polyline solid, and it's a, in a classification of the primitives. And if I were just to, let's go back into the program just so I have access to that. So in this polyline, in this list of primitives that I have in here in my menu, it's also should be available underneath the tools menu. Uh, let's come down here, sorry, build primitive. So most of the time when I'm using and building custom things, I use a polyline solid. And this is the simplest form of a 3D solid. Typically, you're going to use it to create a hearth that we were talking about, or maybe um, a simple tub platform. But when you start getting into more complex things, you may want to use the shaping tools. And that creates a what's more of a 3D solid shape. And an example of that would be in here with this sink where the sink has a kind of an angled ramp cut out that becomes a little bit more complex with that. So the, the 3D solids are used to create things that are a little bit different. And then as you're doing it, and we did a few of these things like this countertop over here, you can use these solid tools the Boolean operation is really three things that you could do to it, a subtraction, an intersection, and uh, a union. And using those three Boolean type operations, you can then create pretty unique things. And that's what I did. I used a subtraction on the countertop. I subtracted out the center of that to make the inset for the glass. And the reason I did it is there's two different materials. And so that's what that subtraction is. Also the subtraction for this ramp sink. And so those are what those tools are. They're just basic operations to allow you to manipulate and adjust things to create very custom things. Does that help start um, answer some yeah, of the questions? It, when you made the door into a symbol and then it actually became an active part of the product you know product list yeah. what is symbol if you can you make anything a symbol well you can make most things a symbol um and um you know i did that door so <clears throat> what i've done here in creating this door i'm going to delete one of the extra objects here is i use those solid tools to create this door and we did a very simple one here, right? 
so all this is is a set of uh, 3D solids and you have the main solid and then you see the two subtractions. I would have done the same thing on the other side of it. So to make this behave and have the program convert it automatically and have it intelligently operate with the program, you can actually convert this into a symbol and when you do that, you can specify what type of symbol it is. In my operation, underneath the tools menu here, you can come down to symbol and convert to symbol. And you actually need to do this in a 3D view. So let's go ahead and take a 3D view that we're in, and then we'll get this access to convert to symbol. And there's a number of categories that you can choose that we provide to you. Not every single thing. I don't have a roof symbol or some or a terrain symbol per se, but these are usually objects that'll be a little bit more intelligent, whether it's maybe a door or a window or a cabinet door or cabinet hardware or various hardware. And then when you're using it in the program, you have, once you've converted that, it will behave like that type of a symbol. And so when I click the, you know, convert to symbol and we open up my library here and we scroll down, here is that door. It shows up in my library and then I can use that in the program for the purposes of a door. Does and then you sense? can open the door the way you'd open any other door and adjust the width and the height and all that. To some degree, yes. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is going to mess up the geometry a little bit of the door. So if I make the door, let's say, 30 inches, you know, it's going to scale it. Um, there may be some issues with some of the stretch planes that, you know, on the arc and those kinds of things if we start making it, you know, very much smaller. But at that point, I've got it set to be 30 by 80. And let's just draw a simple little wall again. And then let's grab that back out of our library. You know, it looks like it didn't do too much damage as I resized it. So it had some intelligence. But the nice thing about it, too, is our doors become parametric after they reach a certain width in this case. And it just duplicates that door. Great. Thanks a lot. That's great. Okay, Beth, right. thanks for calling in. Hopefully that helps a little bit for you. Hey, Scott, we have a few more questions. We have Jean-Paul here. Hey, Scott. Um, th by the way, thanks, Chief, for actually giving some attention to the 3D modeling. But um, when you were making that door, um, the thing that confused me, I guess, is you converted, I think, what it was, a poly or something to a solid. But the idea, isn't it, that in this new in, in 13 that you can actually do all the operations that you typically could do with a solid you could do that with now a poly solid you can um one of the reasons that i did if we just let's go back into an elevation view and here's one of the things if we just draw a polyline and let's say this is the shape of our door and then i draw another polyline solid and let's just put a simple shape on it and then we'll maybe make it a half inch so that it's less. Let me just check into the view here. Oh, where'd we go? There we go. So if I take this and I pull it in a little bit so that it intersects, right? Currently they're both polyline solids and if I go back into that elevation and I do the operation where I take the larger and I do the subtract of the inner it's actually going to create an entire hole out of it so it punched a hole all the way through it maybe that's what you want you want to put glass in there as I did the countertop but if I press undo if I convert that inner object to be a shape then when i do the operation it will just take a bite out of the door okay but on their sink illustration wasn't that exactly the same concept it or? was similar but 
when I drew that sink, um, I drew it with just the CAD lines, right? That okay. that became a shape itself. Um, and, and, and while a polyline solid and a 3D shape are very similar, they're slightly different. The polyline solid is a more simpler version of it. And then the shape is a little more complex or complex shapes. And they do behave slightly different. We're working towards, um, you know, maybe merging those. That that probably won't happen in, in the next release so that it is a little bit more clear. But the reason that you want to convert that to a shape, if I just convert this guy to a shape, and then I do the same operation where I select the larger one, and then I use the subtraction tool, take it out, it actually didn't cut a hole in the door for that reason. So kind of two different intended purposes. It may be a situation where you want to do something like that. And just to clarify though, then, so you can you can actually uh, use those operations with a poly solid and a solid now? So, yes, so you can. Mix the two. Okay, all right, yep. thank you. And I don't know that that particular part's new. You could, uh, well, uh, hmm. I may have to backtrack on that without opening up uh, version 12. We've tried to make it more seamless so you don't really have to know about converting both of those. And in, it's possible in version 12, you had to convert not only the inner variation of this, but the outer variation so that they're both a common denominator to do the subtraction. Now- thank, Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's, yeah, that, that's very interesting. I appreciate that added okay. flexibility, so. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Right. Thanks a lot for calling in. Yeah. Scott, we're going to check in with Charles. Go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Scott. Hi, Charles. I'd like, I'd like to follow up on the uh, the new tool in X13. Um, it it I believe it's a re revolve tool. It's like a circular arrow with a dot mm -hmm. in the middle. Yeah. That kind of piqued my interest because I do a lot of uh, gutter systems oh, or. Yeah. You know, AC ducting, et cetera, et cetera, where you have complicated bending and and it changes position. Sure. Will that allow you to just draw an isometric line and just make a, a complicated shape without joining, you know, elbows and line parts, et cetera, et cetera? Sure. Uh, and and just to be clear, that revolve tool. If I go back into version twelve, and um, and I do something in here and I click on that, that revolve tool exists in version 12. So that's not new in 13, in, in, in X13. So, ah. so that's, an, that's a tool that you can use today in, in version 12. Okay, for some reason, I, I, for the life of me, I haven't seen it. Now, will, <laughs> will it be able to allow me to do a sweep? So yeah, you should be able to <clears throat> create things. Um, I'm not necessarily the best at creating things. If we maybe put a break in here and we convert something in here, maybe put an arc on here. And then we use that revolve tool. Let me make sure that this is thick enough to do something in. Uh, well, actually I'm using version X12, that's okay. And let's just use this tool and let's make it maybe uh, 45. So we kind of created it, you know, kind of a crazy shape. Have you used the 3D molding polyline tool for your gutter system, Charles? Well, no, no, I haven't. And actually, I was just thinking about that, especially for AC ducting. Um, in in my head, I guess I could create a rectilinear shape and you convert it to a molding and have it follow a more complex shape. Um, just kind of thinking on the fly with you here, that would be a good solution to my problem. So one of the things that you could do I've just drawn a line here and let me just take this segment here and I'll just put a slight curve on here. So using the line tool, right? I created a line, I put a little segment in here. You can convert this into, in, in a plan view, this would be probably just a molding or a 3D molding pie line. 
and then you can assign a molding to it. And you browse out to the library, we'll put it in at 44 inches, and underneath our molding profiles, um, we do have a specific library. Adrian, are you out there? Do you know what that library is for the HVAC? Um, I don't know that it has profiles. Let me peek okay. around just a second. We also, I think, have a video on it as well. Okay, so what I did here, Charles, was I just used the molding pie line. I put a molding profile to it. And then if we take a view of this, and I just assigned that profile onto this guy. I've used that in the past to create rain gutters. And maybe yep. it's something that it, you, because you can draw these in an elevation view. When you're looking at the eave of the house, you could then draw in the angle that you want where it snugs into the house, goes down the house, and then at the bottom where you have your uh, sweep away, then you could do that same thing in an elevation view. Great. And you said you did a video, previous video on HVAC systems? Yeah, one of, and we also have, I think, a library of, of HVAC items. Is that is that right, Adrian? <laughs> Yes, so I'll chat out a link to the download for the HVAC catalog. It's called HVAC number two, Spiral Ducting. And within that catalog's download is a link to the video as well. So you get two in one here. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. That's all we have for questions. If there's any announcements you wanted to make. Okay, great. Well, um, first of all, thanks everybody for attending. Remember, we're going to be sending out a survey and a link to the session that we've done here today. And if you could take a moment and provide any survey feedback for us, we'd really greatly appreciate it. We've been doing these free webinars every Thursday. I just showed the schedule. I'll bring that back up in a minute. We're also doing virtual training seminars. These are full training seminars. We do have one coming up in the first part of November. And there's an introductory, intermediate, and kitchen and bath session. Remember, there's a number of resources you can use for your training. Uh, we do on-demand classes. These are self-serving. And then we do one-on-one -on -one training where with one of our instructors, you can do a screen share. No masks are required for those. And then our video playlists, how-to articles, Chief Talk is a great forum because a lot of you more knowledgeable users are out there answering great questions. So make sure you take advantage of these learning resources. And as we were just kind of reviewing our schedule that's coming up for live webinars, next week we have the materials, patterns, 3D visualization, and what's coming up next. So if you want to uh, take a look at what's going on, then if you're new to Chief Architect, want to attend our boot camp, you'll find one of those next Friday and then the following Thursday, we're going to be talking about what we've done with 2D elevations, really kind of being able to take interior elevations where you have maybe a vault or a shed style room and how we're working on that. And then at the end of the month, we're going to be talking about how our 3D rendering will be evolving in the next version. So again, thanks everybody for attending. We really appreciate your time today. Hopefully you've learned a couple of things and have a great day and we'll see you back here next Thursday.